Hi guys, so we have this brand new system and uh, I'll be showing you how to properly charge your system using 410A and uh, right now I have my um, entire setup, I have the weighted scale. Uh, you don't really have to have the weighted scale, this is mainly for people like who are telling the customers how much they have put in, you know, and it also gives you an indication how much um, liquid, like, how much you have used, um, you know, the, your gas, whatever. and. Uh, you know, so this is a Linux system, and uh, this is my gate setup, as you can see. And uh, Linux, like you know, they normally have their chart right behind this board, but anytime I'm working in this area, I don't really like to have the electronics exposed because this is a variable speed unit, plus you have high voltage there, so safety measures, you know, always make sure this area is closed out. And you may want to take pictures of the interior, so I'll show you guys what charts I have, you know, on the screen. Um, so, um, kind of have to like go by what's in there, you know, it gives you a good indication. And uh, this, I have the temperature set up right here. You can see right now, my setup is on the liquid line. So this, has, this system has a TXV, and anytime you have a TXV, you have to charge the system using subcooling method. And uh, if you don't have a TXV, um, you know, if it's a fixed orifice, you know, then you have to use the um, superheat method, you know, so which is we're not going to cover in this one. We're only focused on the newer style method, like, you know, the newer style air conditioning unit with 410A. And uh, this particular one has a, a TX week. So that's why we're charging this particular unit uh, using subcooling method. Now, there's also an approach method, uh, which we're not going to use, you know, I'm just going to use the subcooling method. The approach method is just the liquid line temperature minus the outdoor air temperature. Subcooling is a much more accurate, um, you know, so this particular unit have a 12 subcooling based on the chart that I found in there. Um, now, of course, uh, you know, you have to just, uh, it, the chart also shows the, uh, what really you should expect based on the ambient temperature that you have. Anyways, let me show you guys what my setup is. So I have the suction line, which is the blue line which is kind of like the bigger line uh, connected to my gauge. So that comes in to the blue gauge. Then I have my red gauge, which is the high pressure gauge. Um, and that is the smaller line right here. And this is also called the liquid line. And that's connected to the red gauge. And if you notice, I have uh, these connected, the yellow jacket, like, you know, uh, valves on both ends. That just, I like to have those. So have those on there. You don't really have to have it, but it just makes it a lot more easier, you know. Um, anyways, then you have the middle one, which is what we're going to be using for charging the system. So I have this going to the tank and you can see in this particular uh, case, I have this upside down. So the liquid is at the bottom. The gas is on top. When you turn it upside down, you definitely don't want to be charging it, um, you know, upright position so then I have my valve open uh, you have to make sure all the valves are open you're going to read the readings so this is the current reading turn the unit on and let it run for at least 10 to 15 minutes now it's been about 15 minutes in my case and uh, you know before I started the video I did put in some some on there uh, you know we can see 0.195 uh, pounds in there so the way we're going to charge the system is look at this temperature and the subcooling is basically the saturation temperature minus the liquid line temperature that tells us right there saturation condensing temperature minus liquid line temperature the liquid line temperature is this guy right there which I'm reading at 82 and the saturation temperature is you can see right there so in, in our case is about 88 so you know 88 minus 82 that's how you get your um sub cooling <clears throat> in our case you know we need to go a lot more higher to achieve 12. so to charge the system you don't even touch this valve make sure this is closed and you just use this one highly recommend getting a quick charge if you don't have this quick charge you can damage your system uh, or you have to do it very very slow but in my case you know i can be more gentle and just open it let it charge you can see now i'm charging and i'm going to close it let the system take that in and what this does is it takes this liquid from here and turns it into the gas and put it into the system and remember that's a gas suction um, 
the bigger one is a suction line so you want to insert it as a gas and this is what it helps <clears throat> so if you don't have this you have to really open a little bit and close it it takes longer time so well worth the investment you know if you have this now once you're injecting the refrigerant in there you're gonna see a rise in temperature over here and you should see a drop in temperature over there which will give you the achieved um, subcooling which if you notice saturation temperature we should be bigger minus the liquid line temperature right so this should be bigger this is saturation temperature minus this temperature should give you your achieved uh, goal for whatever subcooling you're looking for now one thing you're gonna see doing this and don't get panic if you see that uh, as soon as you're charging the system see right now it says 82.2 so technically it should drop I'm gonna go ahead and charge the system a little bit close the valve and if you see like you know sometimes it just rises up and uh, and it does that and you're probably gonna panic hey why is it rising because if both of them they're rising you're never gonna be able to achieve that but it, it does happen and it's normal but eventually it goes up comes down and then it stabilizes so just be patient don't get panicked you know just let the system stabilize and you can see I put in some more so now I'm at 0.3 ounce so you just have to do this process slow you don't want to make you want to make sure you don't overcharge the system make sure keep checking and cal keep calculating your sub cooling while you're doing this method and eventually we're gonna achieve that goal in my case uh, the sub cooling of uh, 12 so anywhere you know I think they say three plus or minus three is good you know you're within that range so in my case even if I achieve 10 sub cooling 11 sub cooling I should be okay um, don't kill yourself if you can meet the exact number you know it many other condition applies to this you know your outside environment if how he how hot it is how cold it is outside so you know there are many factors so don't sweat it so let me go ahead and keep charging the system and uh, see if I can achieve my goal So, and it's, sometimes it just takes a while, so you just have to be patient, guys. Don't rush in. If you're gonna rush in, you can damage your compressor. You don't wanna be charging way too fast. You wanna make sure you have this. If you don't have this, you definitely don't wanna rush. Otherwise, you're gonna just inject liquid in your compressor and damage it. So do not, just take precaution, be patient. You know, this is, this requires a lot of patience. So, um, again, do it slow. You know, normally I don't do it that fast, uh, you know, but right now for the video I was showing you guys, I take my time to charge the system so let it stabilize you know come back after a minute or so and then see where it is you know you may have to wait a little bit more let it stabilize charge some more come back do the calculation and then go from there so as you can see our sub cooling is uh, getting close you know I'm almost at 90 and 90 minus 81 you know that's pretty that's pretty good you know so I'm already at 9 so anyways uh, I'm just gonna keep on uh, adding refrigerant little by little and then show you guys the final result okay so just to recap i have added 0.685 pounds and uh right now i'm at 82 and about 91 right here so you can see i'm close to like nine sub cooling right now if i take this value subtracted by this value so i'm somewhere around 9 I'm just gonna add some more get as close to 12 as possible and then we should be good okay so right now I have almost 82 here and I have about 94 here and uh, 94 minus 82 is about 12 so you know that's perfect you know it's about 81.8 but anyways I think it's uh, I've achieved my 12 sub cooling and uh, you know it just turned off because it was in the test mode but anyways uh, my meter went off so I added this much more after I showed you guys the reading so I would say about one one plus pound you know one something and 
I think I have achieved my goal of uh, 12 subcooling on this particular one. And these are just the rating with the unit turned off, completely off. And uh, when the unit comes on, the pressure drops a little bit. So, which is completely fine. It's just below 150, I think. So let's go ahead and turn the unit back on and then uh, just take our final readings. Write it down here. I always write, like to record stuff. And then uh, I think we should be done with this. So again, I have 82.2 and these are the final pressure. So you can see it's 94. Right there is about 94. Minus 82 is about 12 subcooling. And these are my head pressure. So that's pretty much it. One thing I forgot to cover is anytime you're connecting your hoses, make sure you purge the lines to get any air that may be trapped into the line. Just open this a little bit, let the air escape. So you can uh, charge it, you know, without any air in the system, so. Okay, just wanna show you guys one thing. Uh, so this is a variable speed unit and right now it's running at low speed. As you can see how quiet it is and uh, you can see our pressure is different too because of course it's not running at full blast so that's how it saves on electricity um, you know but you can't really use this to calculate your sub cooling because that's not gonna be accurate so if you notice the readings are not gonna be accurate so for you to get the exact sub cooling reading the unit needs to be running on a full blast full power 100% capacity and uh, that's how you get it so what I did was I end up uh, recording all my um, readings on full power so my section pressure pressure was 127.5 my liquid line pressure was 300 it was a little bit less than 300 maybe like 290 or something um, and I recorded my sub cooling which I did achieve and uh, you know it's always a good idea I'm gonna fill out the other stuff later on and uh, there is a method for evacuating your hoses as well sorry about that so you don't lose the refrigerant in the, in the hoses you can still save it um, but that's for a later video all right so that's pretty much it guys this is how you properly charge the system and hopefully this video helps you guys if you like the video please subscribe to my channel and like the video thank you